Hey, I'm Courtney Waterman, your tutor. Lover of anime, manga, and math. And you just tuned into another session of Tutor Me Senpai. Welcome back, everyone. Today we're jumping into a 10th grade topic, similar triangles. Now, if you're new to my channel, I'll be putting time codes in for this video in the description box below. So use that to skip ahead to whatever part of the video you think is most interesting. As always, if you have any questions about what you see here today, or even your own homework, you can always put it in the comment box below, or visit me on my Facebook page, at Tutumi Senpai, and tell me all about it there. Today's video will have two parts, so leave a like, smash the subscribe button, and let's get started. So today we're going to be covering similar triangles. However, congruent triangles and similar triangles are actually quite similar. No pun intended. In an earlier video, we covered congruent triangles. And if you haven't seen that video, don't worry. I have it right up here. You can click that at any point in time. But a quick synopsis was congruent triangles were considered to be congruent at the very least if two things were true. One, their corresponding sides had to be congruent or equal. And two, their corresponding angles have to be equal or congruent. A quick visual. We said that triangle A was congruent to triangle B if the corresponding sides, so the corresponding sides were equal, as well as the corresponding angles. Not saying they had all equal sides and all equal angles, I'm just saying the corresponding angles and the corresponding sides have to be equal. So you see, having these corresponding sides equal and these corresponding angles equal mean that these triangles are actually identical. These are the same triangles. So that's what it means for two triangles to be congruent. What does it take for two triangles to be considered similar? Now, similar triangles are gonna be a little less strict than our congruent counterparts. Now, what does that mean? Well, congruent, you needed not only corresponding angles to be equal, but you needed corresponding sides to be equal. For similar triangles, we're going to have just one of those requirements, and that's gonna be that the corresponding angles have to be equal. What does that mean? Visually speaking, we're just focusing on the angles inside. The corresponding angles, so you see I have one tick, two tick, three ticks. Wherever those are, they don't have to be in the same exact spot. So I could have this right here. However, it could be up here. So one to one here, two to two here, and three to three here. It could be this. However, whatever the corresponding angle is, those have to be equal. So this one is gonna be considered equal to this one. This two is gonna be considered equal to this two. And this three is considered equal to this three. So unlike the congruent triangles, we're just having equal angles. As you see, this triangle is much larger than this triangle. Therefore, they're not identical. However, the shape is preserved. By having all equal angles, you preserve the shape. So these similar triangles look similar. However, they don't look identical. And that's the big difference between congruent triangles and similar triangles. They have the general shape, but they're not tied to being the same exact triangle. But just because similar triangles do not have that same restriction on their sides doesn't mean that nothing happens with their sides. There's a pretty cool property for similar triangles that is focused on their sides. Now, what is that property? Well, similar triangles they might not have equal sides, but the rate in which they're either growing or shrinking is going to be the same for all sides. Well, that means the corresponding sides from one triangle are going to be proportionate to the corresponding sides in the other one. So visually speaking here, we have these two triangles. This one is bigger, this one is smaller, right? We have triangle ABC and triangle DEF. The corresponding sides are going to be this one, this one. I'm going to orientate them this way just to make it easier to see, but you don't have to have it. Remember, you can always rotate the orientation. It doesn't matter, but just to make it a little bit easier to see. So these are the corresponding sides. This to this, this to this, and this to this. So having all the sides from one triangle be proportioned to all the sides of another triangle means that the ratio AB over DE is going to be equal 
to the ratio BC over EF, which is equal to the ratio CA over FD. So AB is going to be this side, DE is going to be this side, BC over here, EF over here, and CA FD. This is always going to be true for your similar triangles. Now what does that mean in English? Well that means that this side, let's say this side DE is 1.2 times bigger than, so this is bigger than AB. Well if that's true, we know also that EF is going to be 1.2 times bigger than BC, as well as FD is going to be 1.2 times bigger than CA. They're all going to have that same scaling, so as it increases or decreases, all of them are increasing and decreasing by the same amount. Not saying that these are all the same size. Once again, that is not necessary for similar triangles. These can be different sizes, but when you compare them to their corresponding sides, they're growing at the same rate. This one is gonna be 1.2 times bigger, this one's gonna be 1.2 times bigger, and this one's gonna be 1.2 times bigger. So it's good to know that the corresponding sides are going to be in proportion to one another. However, how do you find those corresponding sides? It's tough to see which side should make up your ratio when you're trying to build that whole formula. But I want you to remember, what makes two triangles similar in the first place? We said that they have to have corresponding angles be congruent to one another. If all their corresponding angles are congruent to one another, these triangles are considered to be similar. So assuming they give you two angles, that's all you're gonna need to be able to find your corresponding sides. Now what I mean by that? Let's say we have this right here. This right here, and this here. We know that these two are equal. Once again, they don't have to be in the same corner, but just to make this easier to visualize, I'm putting them in the same spot. And we also are given this one. And these two are equal to one another. Now, they don't necessarily give you the last one, but you can easily find that because, remember, the angles of a triangle have to equal 180. So, the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B plus the measure of angle C, right, for this one, has to be 180. So if they give you these two measures, you can just subtract that from 180 and you have your last angle. However, you don't even have to go that far. We just need to know that these two angles are gonna be corresponding with these two angles. And the reason being is these sides opposite these angles are gonna be corresponding to one another as well. So. The side opposite B, this AC or CA, how we want to write it, is going to correspond to the side opposite E. And that's going to be DF or FD, how we want to write it. Likewise, the side opposite A, which is going to be BC, is going to be, once again, corresponding to the side opposite D, which is going to be E, F. And even if they don't give you this C, you don't even need it. You just need to know that the side opposite C, that's going to be your A, B, is also going to be corresponding to the side opposite F, which is going to be your D, E. So if you have at least these two angles to figure out what they're corresponding to, you can figure out your corresponding sides very easily. So a quick recap. Your congruent triangles were a little bit more stiff, needing to have all of the corresponding sides equal and all of the corresponding angles equal. For similar triangles, we don't have that strict requirement, but we do need to have all the corresponding angles equal. And a happy byproduct of that is that your sides, your corresponding sides, are gonna be in proportion to one another. So if you have either one of those things, if either one of those things are given to you, you know that you have similar triangles. That means that for homework or tests or whatever, if they tell you that your two triangles have the corresponding sides in proportion to one another, those are similar triangles. If they tell you that your two triangles have the corresponding angles equal or congruent to one another, 
those are going to be similar triangles. Either one of those is enough to show that you have similar triangles. So I hope you are following today's examples and I hope you see that although your congruent triangles and your similar triangles are a little different, they're quite similar. If you have any questions about what we saw today or even your own homework, you can always put it in the comment box below or visit me on my Facebook page at Tunami Senpai and tell me all about it there. If you haven't done so already, remember to leave a like. It really helps the channel by letting YouTube know that you found this video helpful. And if you found that video helpful, so can someone else. So leave a like, hit the notification bell, smash the subscribe button, and share this video with a friend. Well, that's all the time I have for today. I'm really hoping this helps with your homework. I'm looking forward to seeing you again next week. I'm Courtney, and this is another session of 2 Senpai.